I used to like swimming. I mean, I really, truly did. There was just something about being in the water. It felt natural. See, down in the most rural parts of the Delta by the Mississippi River, the water was, it was part of us, of our culture. Half of our lives we spent in the water one way or the other. Ponds, lakes, rivers, it didn't matter. We swam in them without an ounce of fear. We knew them well. Perhaps that's our fault for being cocky. We didn't know better back then. It all began with a... with a campfire. And a dare. It wasn't strange for my friends and I to go camping. It was something that we had grown up doing, you know, a, a bonding activity for us all. It wasn't even our first time camping by the Mississippi River. It was, however, the first time that we had gone camping since we had turned 21. And as one expects, we had all gotten absolutely plastered. And by the time the dare happened, the fire had died down to the last smoldering embers. The chill in the air seeped back into the campsite, the raucous roars of laughter from before melting into quiet, murmured conversations. I thought that we would have turned in for the night at that point, but most of us had trouble standing on our own at that point. I thought that we would have turned in for the night at that point. Most of us had trouble standing up on our own at that point, much less walking. The bottles out of the campsite, both empty and half full. Despite my thoughts, however, the party continued on. The conversation ebbed into a relatively tame truth of dare game. And I participated in a few rounds, and things were relatively okay for a little while. But I saw a spark of drunken glee in one of my friend's eyes as he leaned toward me during my turn. Finger pointed directly at me. I dare you swim out to that island. The island was one of those unnamed tiny strips of land emerging from the river, barely big enough to hold a few trees and not too terribly far away from the shore. Normally we'd swim back and forth for fun, an excellent challenge against the strong river current. This time, however, was different. For one, we had never gone swimming that far at night. We weren't complete idiots. And secondly, we'd never swam that far drunk. But being the drunk idiot I was, couldn't take a challenge like that lying down. Fine, I declared, climbing to my feet unsteadily. I'll be back in a few minutes. One of my friends, Jonah, stood with me. He was our designated driver, so to speak. We wanted at least one of us to be sober if there was an accident. Not that there ever was, of course. I could tell he was worried as he followed me out to the campsite and down to the riverside. He knew that the whole thing was a bad idea and tried telling me so. I wish I'd listened to him. I stripped off my shoes and stepped into the water. Immediately I shivered. It's cold enough during the day, but it felt like the temperature had dropped even further as nighttime fell. Still... I wouldn't let it dissuade me from my self-imposed task. I waded further into the water. Jonas followed close behind me. And soon we got to the point where the water deepened enough where we couldn't touch the bottom anymore and began to swim in earnest. The water was cold enough that I began to sober up and question the wisdom of what we were doing, but I was stubborn. I refused to back down once I had already started. The current fought with all its strength to pull us downstream, but we fought against its pull. With just the two of us, I was actually beginning to have fun. Dare almost forgotten. I turned my head to shoot Jonas a grin, and he returned it, splashing at me. A peal of laughter escaped me as I dodged the water as he flicked at me. At this point, we were nearly halfway across the river. I still remember what happened next so vividly. As if it had just happened. One second he was there. The next, he wasn't. All I caught was a split second of terror creeping into his expression, and then... Then he was gone. I could feel something moving, fighting, struggling in the water beneath me, distinct from the current around me. I can never forgive myself for what I did next. Terrified, I swam towards the island, leaving Jonas behind to whatever I had him. I was nearly to the shore before my mind caught up to me. My eyes flickered towards the shore, but I knew deep down that I couldn't abandon my friend. Not like this. I turned back around and I dove under, intending to free Jonas from whatever had him. 
That was too late. That was, was far, far too late to be of any help. It, he was devouring him. That thing had him in its grasp. I don't know what the hell it was. Even after all this time, it looked human, but I, I know it wasn't. It couldn't be. Not when I, not when it looked like that. It was pale, almost completely white. It had claws of what looked to be silver. But whatever the hell they were, they were, they were razor sharp. They and its teeth cut through flesh like butter. Nothing normal could do something like that. It could look like that. Its head was buried in Jonas's throat. Five scythe-like claws clutching at the body, tearing the flesh to ribbons in its grasp. His gut had already been eviscerated. Five lines going down his abdomen, allowing various viscera to drift through the water as it ate what remained of my friend and I. I must have disturbed its meal as the thing raised its head from the tattered remains of Jonah's throat and stared at me, the milky white eyes locking on the mine. It felt like hours as we were suspended there, gazes locked. In reality, it was probably less than ten seconds, maybe even less than five. During those crucial few seconds, I came to a few crucial realizations. One, the thing wasn't some dumb creature. It could think. Those cruel eyes had intelligence behind them. And two, I... I was gonna die. And three, I didn't want to die. I could have almost hysterically laughed at the stray thought that crossed my mind. This must be how rabbits feel when they see hawks swooping towards them, claws outstretched. It was that thought that stirred me to action. I bolted, swimming as hard and as fast as I could towards the island. It wasn't enough. In the split second, it took me to turn around and swim for my life. I had seen it drop the corpse of my friend and lunge after me. I swam. I swam for my life, knowing that anything less than my all would mean the death of me. And yet, it wasn't enough. I had reached the shallows, enough for my toes to reach the muck and the smallest sliver of hope raising in me before it was torn away by the burning presence of agony as I felt five sharp claws tear through my calf, rendering the flesh from bone as if it were paper. I gritted my teeth and pulled myself forward, refusing to let that thing win, and to my surprise, I won the game of tug of war. The claws slid through my flesh one final time, and I was free to clamber onto the blessed safety of land. I scrambled as far away from the water as possible on the little island, barely more than a sandbar. It was safety, I came to realize in time, but I was hardly saved. None of us had brought a boat with us. We didn't we didn't think we needed one, and, and with the thing out there, swimming back was hardly an option. And there lied the problem. I couldn't cross the river on my own, unless I wanted to end up like Jonas. Likewise, I couldn't let my friends swim out to me unless they suffered the same fate. I sat on the shore and I watched the water. I could feel the thing staring back, and together, the both of us sat there and watched as the sun began to rise. As dawn rose, so did my determination. I, I wasn't going to die here. I certainly wasn't going to let my friend die either, and so, so my course was set. A frantic race across a stretch of river. I took a deep breath. Hesitating to make what was potentially my final plunge, I closed my eyes, and the last time I had seen Jonas alive flashed through my mind. I breathed out for Jonas. I said quietly as I watched the first rays of dawn begin to shine on the water, and for the others, I added silently, I'm running into the water. Almost instantaneously, as I begin to swim against the strong current, I feel the gaze of the thing on me. I don't dare look away from what's in front of me. I don't want to know how close it is. I don't want to know if I was going to die. I just kept swimming. I, I couldn't help but imagine the thing lurking behind me, ready to strike every time I closed my eyes. Beyond all hope I could muster, I managed to make it across the majority of the river. I was still wary, but I was, I was beginning to hope that the creature would really have left after all. It was still 15 feet or so away from the bank of the river when the thing struck. 
I was pulled under the water at once, a shriek being muffled by the water engulfing my head. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't see, and all I could see was the frothy foam as the thing began to try to eat me alive. I felt its claws sink into my gut as I as I felt its teeth sink into my shoulder. I couldn't breathe, being thrashed as I was. For the few brief moments my head was above water, I had few chances to take a breath. Rather, I screamed, screamed in pain, screamed for help. I'm not really sure which one, it, it doesn't really matter at this point. Regardless, fruitlessly, I scratched and clawed the creature in desperation, almost instinctual attempts to preserve my own life. It didn't work. I felt the bone shatter in my arm by the joint. I felt the distinct feeling of being chewed on by razor-sharp teeth, tearing through my flesh as if it were paper. I shrieked again in pain and horror. I'm dying, I thought. And I was beyond terrified at the idea. I escaped by sheer luck. An accident. I tried hitting the thing on my good arm and missed. I tried it again and missed. But on the upswing, my fist collided with the thing's face, and out of sheer luck, I managed to jam my finger into its eye. I could still remember how it felt as the organ ruptured around my finger, the vitreous ooze gushing around me. I can still remember how the thing shrieked and recoiled. I remember being hazily startled at the fact that it could make noise at all, and then... Then a realization. I took the opportunity to flee while I still writhed in agony. I crawled onto the shore and collapsed, making sure to pull myself as far away from the water as possible. I was out of it at that point, I remember. I remember I remember very little, but the thing I do remember, it's, it's stuck with me ever since. And the last I ever saw of the creature was the one-eyed death glare it gave me. Viscera dripped down its face from its ruined eye and staring me down until it sank back into the water. I don't know why it left. Maybe it gave up. Maybe it decided I was too much trouble to eat. Or maybe... Maybe it was the noise of my friends crashing through the undergrowth. Maybe they had heard my shrieks and they came running. From there, it... It gets a little fuzzy. From what they told me afterwards, they had all fallen asleep not long after Jonas and I had left. They'd assumed that we'd be back soon. When daylight broke and we still hadn't returned, they'd gotten worried. It was my shrieking that alerted them to where I was, and they said they called the cops, and I I was taken to the hospital for my injuries. My arm was beyond salvaging. They, um, they had to amputate to save what little was left. I mean, I wasn't too upset. If I'm being honest. If it meant my arm or my life, I'd rather have my life every time. I was fortunate with my other injuries. Well, they were left with nasty scars. They healed. All in all, I made a mostly full recovery after a couple weeks in the hospital. It's been a few years now. My friends have asked me what had happened. They don't believe me. They tell me that I was in shock over what happened to Jonas. Must have mistaken whatever it was. I said it was probably a bull shark or an alligator. Of course, it's hard to tell what could be the real culprit without Jonah's body, but but I know what I saw. And I know it hasn't forgotten me yet. I gave up swimming. I, I moved to the city, but I still don't dare swim in a pool. I don't go near a pond or lake or river. I think maybe I'm just being paranoid. Or just maybe... Maybe it's just biking its time. Biding its time by the shorelines. Until it can settle the score. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepy Pasta, and I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's episode. Also, since it's getting a lot colder, I could tell you that you can probably pick up some nice hot teas from my wife's tea shop, Ivory Monocle Tea. That's etsy.com slash shop slash Ivory Monocle Tea. And you can get teas that are themed on Dungeons and Dragons, on horror, on creepy pastas, and even things like Avatar The Last Airbender. Especially, I wanted to give a big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez. 
Mr. Thud, Ken Lando Higuchi, Champinsky, Bobby Carmen, Nico Kao, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Deanna Kraus, King Hades F13, Unknown Nobody, Joshua McMeekin, Michael Scarborough, Kazan, this is my real name, no shit, Jason VB Wilson, Infernal One, Little Wolf Gaming, Jimbo the Hutt, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Jordan Wayne Deckart, Randy Lipe, Ann Sharon, Acid System, Mike Bullock, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Brian Ark, Cryptic Nightmares, Shadow Morningstar, Someone You Love, S Man, Kieran the Sloth, Thomas Burgett, Liam Newman, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Nina Smith, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, and Corey X. Kenshin. Thank you guys so much for being supporters on Patreon. You guys are seriously the MVPs, as well as everybody who's listed down there in the description down below. I hope all of you have enjoyed the stories with me, and sweet dreams. <laughs>